But remember, as soon as you take it out of the package, that foam just disintegrates into nothing. All right, Jay, I got to go. Diane's here. There she is. I'm sorry. Hi. You know, <laughs> I, it's what happens is I am on one browser, and then I was like, no, I don't have it. And then, <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, you're I'm, here now. Yay. So nice How to see How are you? you? Great. I'm, uh, I love being here. This is super fun. I thought well, I'd I've noticed that over the last year or so, you've been doing a lot of these these uh, Zoom calls with people. And I think that's so nice that you put yourself out there to reminisce and talk about the now. There's a lot going on now, too. Uh, absolutely. I, I thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, it was interesting. At first, um, I was very hesitant to do podcasts. And, you know, I know a lot of people are, especially as you get older, you're like, ah. Um, but the thing I wanted to say was um, what I really like about podcasts is getting to know people all over the world. I, I yeah. really do. Like, I really, it's really fun. And I, I also, want, you know, don't take it for granted that people remember things from the 80s. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's like if people haven't seen the films I did, well, then great. There's something new. And if you have, right. then maybe it'll bring back nice memories. Yeah, I find that the older I get, the more I reminisce. And so I was, uh, let's say Last American Virgin came out in 82. I was 10 years old then. And I think I discovered it on VHS, like 12, 13 years old. And it's one of my, I think it's probably the first sex comedy that I saw, which by the way, The Last American Virgin is so much more than just a sex comedy. And it's one of those things that threw me off a bit because you have that relationship with Gary and Rick's in there. So there's drama, but then there, the guys are hooking up with a hooker and I don't like, can you explain the filmmakers state of mind when they were making that movie? Cause it could have went both ways, but yeah. they, they went right down the middle with it. Uh, well, first of all, you know, and anyone, you, when you see this movie, those of you who haven't seen it, I just want to say that um, I don't want to spoil the ending, but if you haven't seen the film, it was sort of um, the American version of Ridge, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I mean, sorry, the, it was actually the European version of uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, meaning, you know, we always look for a happy ending in American stories, usually, you know, that's kind of like how the stories end. And this does not end with a happy ending, which is very confusing because you see the word American in the title, last American virgin. So you're kind of expecting this. Oh yeah, this is just going to be a romp of fun sex comedy. Yeah. It's going to be cool. And it's interesting because it, it kind of lures the audience into thinking this is just like a fun kind of like teen comedy kind of thing. And mm. as I found, especially for guys, they're lured in and then all of a sudden they, they've been like, they're expecting sex and then they, they learn yeah, there's sex, but there's also love. So they kind of learn heart. about the heart part of it. And uh, mm. that's what makes it so, I think, shocking for guys, because I think that, you know, you don't expect the end. And I've had a lot of people say to me that that those things have happened to them. And um, so when you're asking about the director, the director, this was based on his life story. It was a true story. And in fact, when we all, the actors all came to Boaz, the director, and we, we said to him, you know, you're not going to end it like this, right? And he's like, oh, yes, because it's based on my life. And, um, you know, it, it's true. So mm -hmm. no one could say anything. I mean, obviously, it was it's devastating. So as actors, we just had to all kind of adjust, adjust to, to the storyline. Were uh, there any alternate endings of any kind or did it was that the original idea that he stuck with? Uh, no, you know what? That was it. But I have actually since I have recently on my Facebook, I uh, have said, hey, anybody who wants to film another version of Virgin, another ending, I'd love to see it. You know, um, there was one uh, fan of the film who actually actually shot a whole new ending of the film. And I just thought it was really it was just great to see somebody who was so affected by it. Just, you know, even before they ever even were on my fan page, they made this little movie. And I, I think it's really fun. So if anyone's interested, just go on my website and look, scroll down and you'll see, I, I recently within the last probably month said, Hey, does anybody have another version of the ending? But yeah, you know, you watch that ending and it sticks with you, right? It, it does. You still remember it today, huh? Well, I mean, I was, I was a Gary. I was everybody's friend. I wasn't the, the guy that the girls gravitated towards, but some of my friends were the Ricks. Like I lived that later on in the eighties um, and the music and like, I, I fit right in with that time period. And so I think that's why the movie sticks with me so much, but I can, I feel Gary's pain. I do. Yeah. I think we gave away a lot about the ending, but that's all it's, right. I know. I, well, here, you know, here's the thing. I think it, it, 
is a, a world that it's it's a universal story, and it's about friends and best friends and love and the first time you fall in love and um, I, one of the things I think you can watch it over and over again because that story doesn't change it's universal and if you would have asked me if this film was going to be I mean seriously when we did it we didn't even expect it to be in theaters because mm. that wasn't a given you did a film and you didn't know if something was going to be in the movie theaters so the fact that it was and then it was Oh, is that a dog? Hi. <laughs> um, no, I just, a I'm, bunch of stuff just fell off my shelf. I don't know oh, why. That sounds like an Amityville thing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Let's get to that in a bit, too. All right, continue with uh, Virgin. Um, but anyway, so I just want to say um, I love that you brought this film up. And originally when I did the film, I was more shy about it because, um, you know, honestly, like I didn't know what people would think of me. And I kind of thought, well, you know, obviously I, I'm doing this film. I'm a young girl. And I, you know, when people contacted me, I was like, mm. well, of course we didn't have the internet then. So it wasn't as, as easy, but as over the years, I've watched the film occasionally when it's been at screenings and I've had to do a Q and A and I, it just gets my heart. You know, I mean, I hate myself on the film. <laughs> You know? um, but do you I, do you actually have fans that can't separate reality from from the mo from the movies, and they're actually mad at you when they meet you? Oh yeah, because of oh, that. Yeah. yeah, I've had people who come up to me and have said to me that you know they hate me. You know that I was the worst. You know they cursed me out and like people. Um, I heard people at a drive-in theater. Somebody said to me, "Oh, I went to see the drive-in, and like the B word was like flat. You know, all <laughs> over, all over the." the theater, you know, like outside, you know, yeah. the, the drive-in, but um, yeah, you know, but I, and believe me, I get it, you know, because, yeah. you, it's, it's, and by the way too, certainly when I did the movie and I really love this about acting is when you do a film, you don't know anything about the actor. Usually you don't know, you used to not know, let's say you hmm. used to, um, and you just watch the film for the film. And I think a lot of directors sometimes pick new people because it, it, it requires, you don't know anything about the person, so you're just involved in the story. So when people saw that film, they saw me as just the girl, you know? Yeah. And I think that that made it even more real. So uh, I don't know. So just, I would say that that's part of filmmaking that I love that, you know, we can play, I can play something. And if you don't know who I am, well, great, because you're going to be more involved in the story. And it introduces people to REO Speedwagon and Keep On Loving You, which oh. plays throughout the... It's so perfectly placed. It plays a lot, which you don't see in movies these days. That's something I noticed, where it's like three or four times throughout the movie. That's oh the main God. song. But every time it hits, you know something is going to happen. Gary's going to do something, oh. you know, trying to... The music in like the film is unbelievable. It's 80s. Um the soundtrack, I don't even know how they, you know, certainly at that time, how they got the money it was one of the, it was actually the first teen sex comedy that came out. It was- Was it really? It was the first. It was the first wow. one made for sure. I know Fast Times came out about the same time we do, but we came, we did it first. It was the first one. It started all the teen films that starred teenagers in the lead. So mm. like Molly Ringwald and, uh, you know, um, you know, all those films she did and John Hughes films and yep. you know, um, Back to the Future and stuff. They all came back after uh, out after Virgin. Virgin was in 1982. We mm. shot it in 1981, the beginning. Um, so it's kind of amazing. It's sort of like it hit so fast and then everybody wanted to see a teenager playing a teenager. Yeah. Well, I mean, 82, you must have been 10, 11. I mean, you were coming into your own, but. I was 19. I know. Were you 19 years old? Yeah. Well, let, let's move forward just a little bit. You, your character redeemed herself, or you redeemed yourself with um, Better Off Dead, of course, with John Cusack. What a sweet character, Monique. That's yeah. an amazing movie. And what I found about that movie, I mean, first of all, Virgin's a classic. And I think, you know, in many circles, Better Off Dead is a classic as well. It's one of the most quotable movies. I mean, what's the one quote everybody quotes from that movie? I want my $2. For exactly. Sure. That's the first thing I thought of. Everybody does. So speaking of quotes, what is the most common quote that you get from your movies? And I would imagine it's mostly from Better Off Dead. What do you hear the most? Well, you know, Better Off Dead had the had the great 
quotes that also had great advice, you know, like goes that way really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. Um, I love that. That yeah. is such a, a Curtis or says I, it. I'm no dummy. No, I've, I've, well, what do you say? I've been in, at school for seven I've years. I'm no dummy. <laughs> So funny. So I know high school girls. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm writing a book about the Better Off Dead right now. No kidding. That's I amazing am. news. Oh. Because I, I wrote a couple of other books, um, but this one, because I love the film so much, there's a few reasons why it came to be, but it's going to be awesome. So I'm hoping to get it out this year. So nice. if you like Better Off Dead, yeah, definitely follow me on social media and I'll let you know when it's coming out. Okay. Uh, it is hilarious. So that film to me, I think had the most memorable quotes. And then the other, I mean, Virgin had some, you know, they, I mean, I think every film has like some fun ones in yeah. them, um, which sort of like at the center, uh, that, or you can use them a lot in different circumstances. Um, but Better Off Dead had just like hilarious, hilarious quotes. Um, I, I mean, and then, I mean, just aside, they also had the crazy runners where like, you know, everyone's dating Beth. You know, I never wants to date Beth. And I thought that was so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. um, let's, I want to bring in my friend. First of all, here's Dawn. Um, she is a huge fan of you and Better Off Dead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, I wanted her to have a chance to uh, say hi to you there. And then I'm going to bring in Jay, who usually joins me later in the show for a nightcap. And uh, Jay is also a fan. He owns a comic book shop in Massachusetts. <laughs> Jay, I'd like to introduce Hello, you to Jay. Diane. Diane Jay. Diane, I am an absolutely huge fan of yours. Oh, <laughs> huge crush. Extremely huge crush. Always will. Always have. Um, so I own a comic book store. And so two of the movies that constantly play easily once or twice a month are Better Off Dead and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Just constantly <laughs> on a regular, regular playlist. Um, so when I heard Ray was having you on, I was like, you know, I was trying to think of something cool to do. And I'm not that cool. So I decided to just find out exactly how much media I actually had that had you in it. So, oh, oh, all right. so, all right. so first. Welcome. Thank you. And by the way, you have, did you say you have like a, you have a, a comic book store, you said? I do. But I, like, I own a, you also have video too? Yeah. Or See, and that's like, remember Blockbuster? Remember? Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I love I this. I worked at one. Because, right? Oh, you did? Yeah, that was so I did. I, I, missed, I missed Blockbuster so much. I used to stroll around them for hours because yep. that's the only way you could find out everything that actually came out or anything that you missed. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there was there was always the original uh, movie stores that, that were, you know, in your hometown that were in, yep. like, someone's basement. And then you're like, hey, look at this horror section. But when Blockbuster came out, they had everything, absolutely yeah. everything. And it is so, great to walk around there in reality. Okay, so go ahead. Go, show me so what you have. I still collect all my media in general. So just what I had, in, you know, in my – in my office right here. So first of all, we've got we've got Better Off Dead on DVD. Um, and again, and, and me and Don just watched this last night. Um, Lynch, guys. Lynch. A, a, a lesser a lesser known, but one of my absolutely favorite movies. Uh, it came in a two pack. Was oh there we go. Terror uh, was Terror Vision. Man, I love Terror Vision so much. It's so off the wall, so crazy that because of it, I had to of course get the uh, the vinyl. Um, that's, that's beautiful. That's a right? collector's item. Right? And I <laughs> it's love still sealed. still sealed, still with the hype, with the uh, hype really? sticker. Um, <laughs> of course, I have the reissue of Wild Stallions from Bill and Ted's Excellent yeah. Adventure, um, which, if you awesome. notice, what it did, may look like that. And I last one, that. With, what took me the longest time to find, but of course, I have on vinyl Better Off Dead. And, oh. and, and there you go, right there. Oh. That's so wild. That's so cool. Thank you. That's so adorable. That is awesome. That's where I really, that's where I really fell for Van Halen was that movie and that song and that song. And that's, that scene, that whole scene with the yeah. burgers. Everybody wants some. Yeah. <laughs> the movies just fantastic. All the movies you did fantastic. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate you bringing me on so I can Absolutely. say hey. Oh, thank you, Jay. Jay and Ray. I like this. Um, thank you, Jay. Jay, that was Wonderful. And if I ever come to Massachusetts, I'm coming to your, your place. Okay? Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later, Jay. Okay. Right. Nice. Bye, Jay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Everybody's sharing uh, quotes from uh, from Better Off Dead. Here. Yes, awesome. That's, that's a funny one. Me. And where's uh, oh, this is a great one. Oh. <laughs> it was so subtle. Sorry, it blew up your mom, Ricky. Oh, I love that. Well, I mean, we can't wait to see the uh, or to read the book. That's fantastic. Um, oh, let's move. Let's move ahead because I don't want to just talk about the past. You're right, still working, fine. right? Yeah. I am. Isn't so crazy? you just did an Amityville movie, not too yeah. a couple years ago. I'm going to show you something. No, I don't have it. Darn it. Okay, I thought I had it. Um, yes, I did an Amity uh, an Amityville movie when I was in my twenties. Twenty. I was okay. twenty years old. I did Amityville: The Possession, and oh. a young man saw this movie. His name is Daniel Ferens. When he was twelve years old, gosh, know where everyone's parents were. But anyway, so he watched the movie and he never forgot it. It scared the heck out of him. And when he grew up, he became a, a writer director. And he approached me when he grew up and said, I would have a film for you. I want you to be in. And he said, I have created a movie called Amityville Murders and asked me to play the mother in the movie. The uh, DeFeo uh, mother. The DeFeo, Louise yeah. DeFeo, who actually passed away in 1974, I think. Uh, I think it was 74. Um, and from a, the, it's this very tragic story about a 23 year old mm. boy who murders his family, and it's terrible. But the first story that I did in Amityville Possession was loosely based on it. So, what happened was when I played the character um, when I was young, I played the daughter. Now I'm playing the mother in basically the same story. So, I did this movie in um, like 2017, I think. It came out in 2019, but it was amazing. And it was, I mean, it was a gift. I mean, to get that role, to play, first of all, a real person, to give that respect to her in that film, I really just felt like, I, I mean, a lot of heart went into that movie. A lot of, and Dan was like really into making it like realistic and it's more in a way of a drama than a horror in, in my opinion, but yeah. um, it's really, really great. But I think if you see when I'm playing the daughter at 20 and then you see me now, I think you'll, it'll be a cool experience for fans. Yeah. Like, there's, there's a lot of pressure with something like that as well, because that is one of the biggest series of horror yeah. movies, I think. I know they, they keep making different incarnations of these movies, uh, but they do follow a storyline, and that's obviously the house and the uh, the family, the original family. Um, that kid just died, not kid, but he just died recently as well. Butch DeFeo, uh, Ronald, uh, Butch DeFeo um, Ronald, Ronnie DeFeo just passed away in prison a couple of months ago. Yeah, and he was the one that was accused of murdering his family, and that's what the whole series of movies were based on. Yeah, it, it will. It was. Well, that's that, how it started. I know. And here's the thing: I think the reason why it gets a little confusing with the Amityville subject matter, the first part of it is that the house is built in a weird feng shui. It's built like you know how your front door faces the street. Yeah. This front door faces the house next door. So okay. the feng shui of the house is completely off. It's like really off. Odd. That's what caused the murders. Well, yeah, that's the so feng, shui. feng shui, right? <laughs> um, it was it was supposedly built on Indian burial ground, which I don't know. I, I would think everything's built on Indian burial ground, but whatever. That that area is supposed to be built on it. So the originally when this all happened, after that, now I don't know if murders happened from the time that that house was created to the time that the DeFeos moved in. But the DeFeos, when they moved in, for sure, the true story is that the son murdered the entire family and the problem the thing that's so scary about it on top of the murders which was just crazy and so horrible is that when he went to shoot a parent the like the parents nobody woke up the siblings didn't wake up you'd think you hear a gunshot you get up sure. and you, you run everybody was face down on their stomach when it happened mm. and so that was a very i mean the, you it's like not explainable it's very right crazy you know just so that's where they sort of the legend came from then the Lutzes moved in yes. and the Lutzes felt the spirits and they left and that was the and movie then that was the move that was Amityville yeah. Horror that was the first right. one so Amityville Possession was a prequel it happens before okay and then the other part of it is is that there were murders after that after the DeFeo murder um it was well I wouldn't say murder there's been deaths it was a suicide uh, hanging. There was like there were deaths afterwards in that house. So that house has been plagued with more than one problem over the hmm. years. So it's anyway, funny. That, there you go. Virgin was my first sex comedy, and Amityville Horror, the book, was the first adult book I remember reading when I was like twelve years old. My mother what? was very concerned. I, I It's funny. <laughs> oh, this is really funny. So 
I showed this to Jay earlier. I bought these at a, um, a, 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 a flea market. And these are original, like 1984 headphones. And I'm wondering, what, did they know that triangles and these designs would like, they would they would scream 80s, like 20, 40, 60 years later? You anyway. know what? Absolutely not. And I love that. Because Nat right? reminds me in the scene where he has the headphones on him, those little earphones in him. Wow. Thank you for bringing well, me back. It's funny because I can remember I was in a doctor's office. We were in the waiting room. I had my first set of headphones and my first Walkman on. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was carrying around the Amityville horror book. And my uh, mom was like, is that scaring you? You're not going to sleep if you keep reading that. I, I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. But I remember that moment with these headphones and the, the Amityville horror book. And well, with the Virgin, I think we're, we're very connected. It's we're vibing here going on here i agree i agree i i, I want to also say you know i i believe that horror is sort of the rite of passage to becoming a teenager meaning mm. you know you're when you are a kid you know you you're introduced to the world and then when you hit about 10 or 11 years old now the world you know obviously there are scary things in the world but when you i remember like this place where in life you know you you horror films were also not that big in, like in the 80s, they were sort of coming. It was kind of like today, you know, e even A-list stars, stars are doing, you know, horror films, but it oh, wasn't yeah. something that was a normal thing then. And, um, but I, when you become a teen, it's almost like you see a horror film and then you kind of challenge your friend. Oh yeah, I saw that horror film. <laughs> I, survived. I know it's make-believe, but I, it didn't scare me. And then the next kid goes, I'm going to see it. And they're scared. Well, everybody's scared, but they go, no, that didn't bother me. You, you know, so I think it's kind of a yeah. right of passage to growing up and dealing with fears, you know, and like, yeah. can you keep cool when you see something and you know, it's make believe, but it doesn't seem like it's make believe. It seems it's so real. Scared me for a long time. I watched them when I was 13, 14, but they still scared me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I'm glad we talked about Amityville because I, I do a podcast called New England Legends and we often talk about ghosts and, and stuff like that. Old, old stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun, but I, Joy is one of our listeners. She's a legendary listener and she's an investigator as well. She loves the paranormal. I so, love uh, the paranormal also. Yeah. Uh, Joy, that's so cool. So yeah, what exactly. are you doing now, Diane? What, what can we look right. forward to besides the book? That is amazing. What do you got coming up now? All right. So... If you would have told me that I would have even been acting again in my life, I would have saw, said, I can't even, I can't even see that. You know, I, yeah. I, I didn't even see that in my future, but um, I'm married. I have two kids. My daughter is a filmmaker. She kind of needed me for some films. I got into her stuff and I kind of helped her and that kind of got me back in the business a little bit. And, and, and then the Amityville thing happened. Well, here are some upcoming things. So okay. first of all, um, I have a movie that's going to be coming out probably by the end of the year. And it's called High Holiday. I have a cameo in that. And it's with Tom Arnold, Jennifer Tilly, and Clarice Leachman. Oh, so love her. Uh, so it, she didn't, I didn't even get to see it. And it, I I wish that she was around to see it. Um, One of her last projects, you think? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. Wow. It could have been her last. I mean, we, yeah. I know that, um, and, and High Holiday has like a 420 kind of reference there. So. Okay. So we'll all go, go, go there if you like that. Nice. That's the part. Um, yeah. So that's a comedy. Then I have um, a film that I did during COVID, and this is very exciting. It's coming out August um, 16th, and this is a Bundy movie. A Bundy movie? A Bundy movie, and it is called American Boogeyman. Okay. And it's starring um, uh, Chad Michael Murray as Bundy, and... Um, Oh, um, let me see. Uh, Holland, uh, Ro oh, I'm getting the names now. Ro I'm going to say Ro Roland, Roland. Uh, people know her name. Anyway, okay. she, she's in the movie too. She's a young woman. I should get my phone. I don't have it. Anyway. Um, and then, um, uh, this was cool. The woman who plays Mrs. Bundy is, um, the woman who was in Insidious, um, Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, I know who you're talking about. I'm, I'm looking just, this up for you I'm as we talk. Blank. Thank you. You have to help me. <laughs> All I, right, I, I will. I feel so sad that I can't remember this woman's name right now. What is it? People in, in the audience are going, it's da da da. Uh, well, you know what? I do, so I do a morning show at a radio station, and 
Um, this happens all the time. I will say like, who was that? And I can feel people screaming right. from miles away. That's what's happening right now. Well, she is an amazing, incredible actress. Uh, she's done a tremendous amount of horror and, uh, but she- Holland Roden. Holland Roden. Okay, Roden yes. and then- Lynn Shea is Lynn in Shea. this. Lynn Shea. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, Lynn. I deeply <laughs> apologize. You know, all I do is say how great Lynn Shea is and it's like I couldn't get those words out. Um, <laughs> uh, but also on top of it, there's a new actor to look on, uh, look out for, and that is um, uh, Jake Hayes. He is okay. in the show. He's got a lead in it. Um, and then there was a very special person who's got a bigger part than I do, and that's my daughter, Olivia De Laurent. Oh. Is she and the she, filmmaker? She's the filmmaker. Okay. And she also is an actress. And she also is on, she's, she does, she has a, mostly what she does is comedy. And she's on TikTok with Sid and Olivia. If you check out Sid and Olivia on TikTok, she's on that. Uh, she also had a show on Apocalypse, uh, called Apocalypse Goals. That's on um, Snapchat, all the different mediums. But um, Olivia. Okay, hold on. Would you, would yeah. you know what TikTok is if you didn't have daughters? I think so. Really? Because I, I, I've got an 11 year old girl that's always on it and I still don't understand it. Just, it's, just. It's the quickest of all media. I mean, it's like, it, what, media, it's like you have like 30 seconds if to tell a whole story or to it. Gotcha. That's, that's the whole idea. So my daughter with this Sid and Olivia uh, thing she does, they do very quick comedy. And it's like you, it's just like you go, whoa, it's so funny. You have to check it out. You'll I'll check that out. Yeah. And I'll ask my daughter to help me. Oh, that. she'll go crazy. She'll lose <laughs> They're really funny, and the, and Olivia is the one who looks like me. So, so yeah. um, these girls. Um, so that particular um, that film is her first dramatic role, and that is I got to tell you something. This movie is going to be amazing. So that is coming up. I am very excited for uh, to be in a movie with my daughter. And that's you, fantastic. Yeah, like I mean, that's a again. I what a gift. Like I don't even. Don't even know what to say. Sometimes in life you get rewarded for things you don't even know how it happens. <laughs> well, much like what I'm doing right now, this is a gift. Thank you, Diane, for joining me. Been a fan for so long. And you know what? I, you're too humble. I know I didn't want to bring this up earlier, but you, in our my certain age group, you were our first crush. You really were. And the more people I talked to, it was the girl from Virgin, the girl from Better Off Dead. In all honesty, you, you were my first crush. Um, as far as somebody seeing somebody on the screen, I know. <laughs> and I knew you did, you probably wouldn't want to talk about that because you seem very humble, but, um, it's so I guess, uh, how long has it been? Like 35, 40 years, <laughs> 35 years later. It's, uh, it's really neat to be talking five years, to you. Five so. years later. It's like five years and uh, I'm still like, you know, uh, right? no, it's really, uh, I have to say I am always, I'm, I'm just, I'm just glad to be remembered. And <laughs> well, yeah. and then on top of it, like to be the girl that people have the crush on, well, that's just a gift. Like, thank you. Like I'm, yeah. I'm blushing. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dan. I hope we can do this again. You know, when the book comes out and in the movies, I would love to talk to you again. Thank you. I would love it. And um, I love uh, meeting your audience and um, Hey everybody, just, if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Diane Franklin 80. And, and if you go to Facebook is scary cause it's full. So you might just, I don't know about that one. Just there's, I have Diane Franklin under group page. And so you'll see my book covers and you can go to that, but I'm also on Instagram, Di actress, Diane Franklin. So try to find me. And if you can, it will make you worth it. Cause I, I, I have a lot of fun. I put stuff on my, my, I could tell. Cool. All right. But thank you Diane, so much for having me on the show. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>